Oh, that's so funny, bro. Come on. Put the director of the CIA in like a lit in, in like a military compound. Coming from a stranger. He hesitates a second, then picks up. Hello? John Brennan. Who is this? You're a fing loser. <laughs> if John Brennan hadn't been John Brennan, this might have looked like an ordinary prank call. But John Brennan happens to be one of the most powerful men on Earth, the head of the CIA. Who is this? How did you get this number? It was so f***ing easy, bro. You're such a d What do you want? I don't want anything. I already f***ing own you. How much do you want? We want five trillion dollars. <laughs> the US government will classify this call as part of a larger conspiracy of identity theft, harassment of government officials, and cyber terrorism. The caller will pay a heavy price for this moment of trollish glory. Why are you doing this? We want you to stop bombing the Middle East. Oh. Across Unacceptable. Unacceptable, dude. Never mind. Can't do that. That's terrorism. That's cyber terrorism for sure. Across the Atlantic, in a house in the West Midlands of England, a 15-year-old kid in his room, the phone still in his hand. He can't believe what he just- European chatters are so funny. They're like, oh, the John Oliver video has been on YouTube since Sunday. It's like, yeah, if you live in Europe, you can see it. Not in America, okay? Just did. He calls himself Kraka, and he loves to smoke weed. In fact, he's high right now. He's also the leader of Krakas with Attitude. He and his companions terrorized and embarrassed the US security apparatus to a near incomparable degree. They leaked the personal data of police officers, FBI agents, and DOJ officials. They hand-delivered top-secret documents to Julian Assange. Some of the most publicized hacktivism attributed to Anonymous. They call themselves Anonymous. Yeah, it was actually them. These guys are fucking dope, what the hell? In part for the lols. And this is their story. This was political. Teenager. Cyber attacks. Hijacked the computers of several U.S. intelligence and security forces. To the collective called Crackers with Attitude. Two thousand eight in Virginia, a different kid who only calls himself Default. He is a pretty typical American teenager. He loves soccer, video games, and his dog. He often clashes with his father, who works in the government. At some point, Default starts cheating in his video games. This gives him the first taste of using computers to do things that you're not supposed to. Exciting, powerful things. Gateway drug. He starts learning all that he can about how computers work and how to get them to bend to your will. 2008 was an exciting time to get into hacking. The decentralized hacktivist group, Anonymous, was in its heyday. If you managed to get into their secret chats, you got a front seat view of their actions. Anonymous is one of the biggest online vigilante groups. Members hack into companies and governments. Now a worldwide and widely recognized hacking group. Hackers with the group Anonymous. Citizens of the world. We have seen the erosion of due process. A cyber war. Anonymous. Anonymous. Anonymous has struck again. Young Default is fascinated. Anonymous embodies an exciting spirit of freedom through chaos. They showed how you could force the whole world to pay attention without you having to leave your bedroom. Some anonymous actions are political, some are just trolling, and Default, after tasting this very new kind of power, is keen to learn everything he can about hacking. He starts to hack random websites just for the challenge of it, just to see if he can. But after hanging around Anonymous's chats for a while, he starts to find the group, well, cringe. For one thing, it's crawling with feds, people are getting arrested, and it's tough to know who to trust. Anonymous has become so big that vetting people becomes difficult. There's tons of infighting and doxing. Since it's the only hacktivist group most media outlets know about, Anonymous keeps getting credited for the work of other, often more sophisticated hackers. It's a mess. So Default gets involved with offshoot hacker groups, one of them called AnonSec. The group positions itself as anti-anonymous. But similar to Anonymous, AnonSec performs operations, hacking initiatives that sometimes have a political purpose, and sometimes are just, as one might say in 2008, for the lols. The f I, I hated recording that. AnonSec is quite advanced and Default gets better and better at the game. 
The group controls a botnet. A botnet is essentially a large pack of infected computers under someone's control. You can use those computers to further spread malware across the internet to make the botnet larger and larger. Or you could, for example, attack a server with it in order to overload it. Default is tapping around Anonsec's botnet and gets curious about what computers they've actually gotten under their control. He finds that one is a server of the Canadian Medical School, Windsor University. Suddenly, Default finds himself with direct access to the university's finances. He pulls up records of students who owe the school money. It all adds up to $9.4 million. And at the bottom of the list, something very tempting. A delete all button. How could he not push it? Yes! These people might... Bro. Where are these fucking incredible legends now, brother? That is so unfathomably, unimaginably cool. Like, Jesus Christ, dude. I, I can't comprehend how one person could be so fucking impressive. Yeah, they all probably now work for the CIA, either on their own volition or as a part of their reduced sentence or something, but... You know, really enjoy having their slate wiped clean, as it were. Um, if you look, some of them owe a substantial amount of money, you know, like 70000 I think some people owed like up upwards of like over 100000 It's a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? It's just like perpetual debt that sometimes it just lasts for decades. So, um, just deleted everything. I went into the PHP shell and just like sent everything to DevNull and just like shredded it. So whatever I sent there is just not coming back. This is from the podcast Darknet Diaries. They have a fantastic episode with Default. Of course, this story poses some questions. We tried asking the university if the debt stayed deleted. They did not answer. But usually student loans have multiple on and offline and offsite backups. There should be hard copies of the student's signed loan agreements. However, Default feels like he's really doing something at the time. There is a certain rush to committing a crime when it feels like doing the right thing. Other hackers might have used the sensitive student information to make a profit. There's actually a shadow industry worth billions surrounding our most sensitive data. So-called data brokers gather all the info available about us on the internet, your contact information, browsing history, and online transactions. This data is often bundled into shadow profiles, which are then being sold. You might receive a tailored mail or a robocall based on your shadow profile. In the worst case, someone might try to steal your identity. Incogni helps you remove your data from the numerous lists of data brokers. The only thing you have to do is create an account and allow Incogni to act on your behalf. Afterwards, you can easily track the status of all the requests the fuck in the dashboard. Check out incogni.com slash TV for an exclusive... Also, this is a pretty fire fucking segue. ...exclusive 60% discount on a one-year plan using the code FERNTV. Additionally, benefit from a 30-day money-back guarantee. Despite Incogni's efforts, some of your data might still linger online. Always remain cautious when sharing personal information anywhere. By trying out Incogni, you're actively supporting our channel. More and more of Default's hacks are motivated by altruism rather than just curiosity. As recently as 2014, bestiality was legal in Denmark. Other European countries, Germany, the UK, Sweden, had recently banned it. What this meant for Denmark was an increase in animal sex tourism. For years, Danish animal rights activists tried to bring attention to this. They called them dog brothels. So sick. It's so crazy. And I had a dog so that really pissed me off just thinking about the fact what if someone took my dog and that happened to my dog i would freak out so as default describes it he and other anon sec hackers lend their technical skills to the animal rights movement so we why was this difficult to like put into law like why was criminalizing or making this illegal so difficult in Denmark until 2015. <clears throat> what the fuck is going on in Denmark, bro? We, I think we took down the official Denmark government website and then we actually um, defaced it 
you know, and said, did you know that your government allows bestiality? And there's bestiality dens where people can go and pay money to do these things to animals. And most of them are like people's pets. They shut down bestiality websites via DDoS attacks and tweet evidence of sexually mistreated animals. Like, I don't think that there is like a robust marketplace for this, right? Like it can't be economic reasons. Like it must have been even fucking worse than that. I mean, that alone is already pretty fucked up. But it's got to be someone who was like, no, I got a dog in this fight, if you know what I mean. No pun intended. Like it must have been people who were like really invested in trying to fuck dogs. The information reverberates around the world and is widely condemned. Anonymous gets credit for anon sex actions, which deeply annoys default. But it works. In part due to the hacks, more people know about Danish dog brothels. They talk about them online, protest them, until the case winds up in Parliament. In April 2015, Denmark finally bans bestiality. While default is leveling up as a hacker, he also becomes an early adopter of crypto. He accumulates a significant amount of Bitcoin, more than 1,000. This would amount to a lot of money today, somewhere around 40 million US dollars. He keeps these Bitcoins on a hard drive in his room. He also knows he's making powerful enemies, so he gets a bit paranoid, a bit fanatical with his OPSEC. He never logs into his own Wi-Fi, for one. He uses a satellite dish to log into a free Dairy Queen Wi-Fi half a mile away. He's always connecting through a Tor node. Every time he turns off his devices, he makes sure they're encrypted. When he turns them back on, he has to wait 30 minutes for them to decrypt. For the most part, he never tells anybody what he is doing. He knows he has a lot to lose. Ultimately, it won't be enough. Back in May 2013, a 29-year-old US intelligence contractor also has a lot to lose. He has his own home in Honolulu, a loving girlfriend, and a salary of over $200,000 per year. But he's discovered a huge secret, and it's too big to keep. The US government has the ability to spy on pretty much any man, woman, child on earth who has come into contact with a computer. Uh -oh. And this contractor, unwittingly, has helped make that technology possible. <sighs> he's haunted by this information, and horrified that his government is violating its public civil rights so egregiously. He knows that revealing this information to anyone, a lawyer, a judge, or even Congress, would be committing felonies so severe that he would spend a lifetime in prison. He's worried he'll never see his family again, and he doesn't know what consequences they'll encounter if he blows the whistle. But he has to do it. He's been quietly collecting evidence of this secret for a while, and he's just downloaded the last documents. He tells his employer, the US government, that he needs a couple of weeks off to manage his epilepsy. This buys him a bit of time to leave the country without arousing suspicion. He chooses Hong Kong because he views it as a bastion of free speech. He believes it's one of the few places in the world that could and would protect him from the wrath of the US government. Oh. There he meets journalists Laura Poitras and Glenn Greenwald and delivers evidence of what used to be waved off as a conspiracy theory. And so, Edward Snowden becomes one of the most important whistleblowers of our modern time. Snowden's revelations scandalize the world and spark a long overdue debate about individual privacy versus national security. He inspires many young Americans like Default to take a good hard look at how their government functions. Default doesn't want to sit around and let surveillance happen to him. He wants high-ranking intelligence officials to know what it feels like to be spied upon, to have their private information stored and distributed, and to have it used against them. This is when he teams up with the Krakas with Attitude, founded by Kraka, the kid who's always high. Leicestershire, England, 2015. In a housing estate on the outskirts of a sleepy former mining town, there's not a lot to do except get high or go online. In the case of 15-year-old Kraka, he spends his time doing both. He's angry about corruption, about surveillance, but in particular, about the US's involvement in the Middle East. He becomes especially focused on Palestine and sees the US as directly responsible for death and suffering in Gaza. 
he decides to do something about it. This was political. We heard he was really angry about US foreign policy. So he started a collective called Crackers with Attitudes, and then he hacked into sensitive documents online. One of his first victims is then the National Director of Intelligence of the Obama administration. Clapper, one of the highest ranking members of the intelligence community, had his phone number and address waiting to be found with just one Google search. This provides Cracker with enough information to hack into his email. He posts proof of it on Twitter, which catches Default's attention. Cracker then gets the phone calls to Clapper's house phone rerouted to the Free Palestine movement. Default tweets his respect to Cracker, and the two start chatting. Edward Snowden himself has given James Clapper a very special shout out in an interview with the German broadcaster, ARD. Unfortunately, that interview was blocked from US and German television networks. Apparently, the video is immediately taken down every time it's posted on YouTube, so we'll only show the quotes visually. I would say sort of the breaking point is seeing the director of national intelligence, James Clapper, directly lie under oath to Congress. What we do not do is spy unlawfully on Americans, or for that matter, spy indiscriminately on the citizens of any country. We only spy for valid foreign intelligence purposes as authorized by law with multiple layers of oversight to ensure we don't abuse our authorities. Kraka and Default are livid. Kraka and other hackers loosely connected with CWA team up to target more high-ranking members of the intelligence community. They want to embarrass them and to show them that they aren't as powerful as they think they are. At the top of their list is John Brennan, head of the CIA. Dude, what the fuck happened to people like this? I mean, I guess the Edward Snowden situation kind of had a chilling effect on this kind of behavior, I guess. Brennan, like Clapper, has enough information online that he basically doxes himself. Kraka looks up his publicly posted phone number and finds out it's a Verizon number. He calls up Verizon's internal tech support and pre Bro, Sim swipe the fucking director of the CIA? Are you kidding me? That's insane, dude. Sim swapping is it's so, so menacing. It tends to be an on-site technician who's having trouble helping a customer on-site. Tech support asks Cracker for his employee code, and he just makes one up on the spot. It works. The support technician provides Cracker with access, and suddenly he has the account number, the PIN, and John Brennan's private email address. If you have just enough information on someone, pieced together from different sources, say, their address and last four digits of their social security number, you can easily change the passwords on all kinds of accounts and take it over. And that's exactly what Kraka does with Brennan's AOL account. Once he's in the email account, Kraka gets Brennan's- I'm sorry, election zone. You're right. You keep hearing slurs in this video and it's really uncomfortable for me. I apologize. I would be bleeping the C word throughout the duration of this video, but it's just too many times where they use it. It does seem like, I mean, I don't know if this makes it worse or better for you, but at least like the person saying it is white, I think. He's with a soft day and it's a white guy saying it, I think. Private cell number and shares it with default. And so they start spam calling the director of the CIA, relentlessly calling him and his family. I told him he was a piece of shit. Basically like y'all are awful people. Like really, like you're not doing any net positive things for the world, you're just not. John Brennan is freaked out. Sure, the calls are a little more than a prank, but how could he know that? At the time, nobody knew who was behind the calls or what their intentions were. Brennan has to lay low for a while in hiding with extra security details for himself and his family. At the same time, Kraka's breach into Brennan's email gives him access to sensitive documents. Kraka first posts screenshots on Twitter, but then egged on by default, and maybe oh that's so funny bro come on you fucking put the director of the cia in like a lit in, in like a military compound that's be asking awesome. himself what would snowden do he decides to hit up wikileaks julian assange himself takes interest he publishes the documents in october 2015. they include brennan's 47 page sf86 application a sensitive form required for obtaining top secret government security clearance the form reveals his criminal history, psychological records, past drug abuse, and other details nobody would want about themselves online. Not only that, from Brennan's emails, WikiLeaks publishes Bush-era recommendations for how the presidency should operate in the Middle East. 
There is also an internal congressional correspondence from the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence that offered suggestions on how to make future interrogation methods, also known as torture, compliant and legal. The breach cost the agency $1.5 million in damages and relocation costs. That's it? Costs, as several operatives went into hiding before they knew that there was basically no threat level. Above all, it was widely embarrassing. <clears throat> Hacking into Brennan's email was laughably easy. This is true, and it's true that you guys have actually broken into his private email account. How difficult would you say it is? Uh, give me out of 10. Sure, out of 10. One. One. It's a lot of, I guess, private information, really. It's pretty stupid, really. He's, he's supposed to be so high in the government, like head of CIA, that he should be invoked. If you can have access to this level of sensitive information, and you're vulnerable to being sim swapped. I don't know what to tell you. What the fuck? They should be celebrating this child for permanently making American cybersecurity better in the government. You know what I mean? That's insane. Nothing that, in my opinion, I feel like nothing that you can have access to w without like a hard USB key should be accessible like this like all of this stuff you're supposed to put behind a fucking all of this stuff you're supposed to put behind a fucking like paywall i mean not paywall a, a physical key i didn't tell needs to be behind like a physical key like a usb key not a paywall sorry am i crazy about this like what the fuck do they have no fucking in, uh, interest in, in cybersecurity at all? Can you give us any indication of your background? I mean, how old you are? Are you in the United, the United States? I mean, anything you can tell me about yourself? Yeah, um, I'm still the age of 20 years old. Um, I smoke pot, and I live in America. And, and you smoke pot? Ooh. All day, every day. We wonder what John Brennan must have thought while undoubtedly watching this in his relocation house. What fury must have built up inside him? The CWA aren't done. They release more. Have you learned nothing from lockpicking lawyer physicals not secure? No, dumbass. You don't understand what I'm saying. There are, there are physical keys that you can use to access certain types of software, as in something that you have to carry on your person. I don't mean literally like a fucking, I don't mean a literal key, a Yubi key. Not like a fucking lock that you can pick. <clears throat> My man said, I'm lock picking the CIA, bro. <laughs> Watch out. That's way less secure, lol. Is it? I thought like a, I thought like a, some kind of, You said a physical key? Yeah, that's what it is. No, it is a physical key. Like, it's a, it's a physical property that you carry with you, and you can't access certain accounts without that being put into the fucking computer. Save is multi-factor. Yeah, multi-factor plus what I'm talking about. I think that's like the most, the, the highest level of security you can arrive at that is commercially available. Two factor authentication keys. Yeah, that's what is, yeah. CAC cards in the military, they have them, <clears throat> and yet <laughs> shit gets leaked in Discord servers and Thunderbird forums or whatever the fuck that game is called all the time.
air gap the servers and biometric access, then lock that shit in a vault with 24 seven security. It is physical. We use it as triple factor authentication. Now all you government uses it pretty much. Bro started the stream muted talking about cybersecurity. I mean, it's funny that you're saying that, but I'm not wrong. I'm, I'm definitely a fucking himbo and not very knowledgeable on this kind of stuff, but I am definitely more knowledgeable on cybersecurity because I have to be than the average person for obvious reasons and and obviously nothing is is impossible to penetrate like as long as there's a human being touching the process there is always a flaw that's why most of the hacking most of the successful hacking including the one that you just saw requires social engineering like duping a fucking verizon worker <clears throat> humans are the single greatest security failure. It's the weakest link. But yeah. More and more information. With control over clappers and other operatives accounts, it's even easier to get people to give up information to in turn access further accounts and databases. The problem with analog, analog methods of security for classified documents are unironically more effective than cybersecurity. Analog methods are not accessible, then, then you can't really use it in a network. That's the issue. That's why people do this. Uh, that's why people try to restrict access as best as they possibly can. But you can't fucking, like, access them. I remember watching, um, I remember listening to a Truanon episode specifically about I think it was maybe, was it True Anon or was it Chapo uh, talking about George H. W. Bush and like what he did in the CIA and like what he was tasked with? His task, uh, his task was specifically um, creating like a database for the entirety of their operations. So he he basically had the was it True Anon or was it Chapo? Could be either. I don't know, but um, so he had basically all the keys of the castle. Because before then, everything was analog. But, you know, it, when it's analog, paperwork is shredded. It's very difficult to, to get access. You might not even know what to search for. You don't know who to search for, what to search for. Um, so when, when all of that information gets logged as data, <clears throat> you can at least make it searchable. But then it's easier to penetrate off-site. It's easier to penetrate without uh, without actually ever stepping foot inside of an office building. They gain access to FBI's deputy director, Mark Giuliano's account. There, they discover a database with personal information of 9,000 Department of Justice officials and 20,000 FBI agents. They post it. They then get access to the Justice Department's joint automated booking system which has records on all U.S. prisoners. They check out the records of fellow hackers like Jeremy Hammond and post those online as well. They wreak havoc and embarrass one institution after another. Did these kids really think that they were going to get away with it? At the time, I really didn't care. I just like, that was towards the end of the run. It was just like, all bets are off. You know, it had gone all the way down the rabbit hole. I had just become very disillusioned with people's complacency and their lack of care for what was going on. So it's like, we're going to bring attention to this with like chaos and mayhem. All of a sudden, everyone in the chat is an expert in cybersec. Lamau. Okay. I'm not going to lie. This is Twitch. This is perhaps one of the only places. This is perhaps one of the only fields where like, I will give credence to chat. It's like half the fucking chat is in some form of like comp sci or IT. 
So there definitely is a lot of people here that know or are knowledgeable about cybersecurity. It's I'm sure there's there's some. I would never say that about any other uh, issue. Kraka knows his actions have poked a very big bear. He knows there will be consequences. He just doesn't know what they'll exactly be. I'm gonna go to Russia and chill with Snowden. Cause I know that the government are pretty mad about this. I'm probably gonna get told you. I'm actually a pretty fast runner. Default is paranoid the whole time, constantly worried about his OPSEC. But he let his guard down. Default became involved with an ex-girlfriend of one of his friends. According to him, he asked his friend in advance if it's okay with him. The friend says, sure, go for it. He's way over it. But he isn't. Default and his friend are hanging out one night, drinking and chatting over Xbox Live. I slip up for the first time ever. Being f***ing arrogant and cocky, it comes on the news, CI director hack, blah, 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 all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that was us, blah, blah. I was like drunk talking and just totally like, gave myself away. He never thought his friend would do anything with that information. Hell, he didn't even think his friend would necessarily believe him. But today, Default is pretty sure this friend turned him in. That's... Fuck that guy. What the fuck, dude? Yo. That's magic, bro. Dogs into snakes. Turning dogs into snakes every goddamn day. That's crazy, bro. Fake friends, dude. A real fucking blight on society. When the FBI raids you, they don't knock politely. <laughs> FBI agents enter a false room, just as his computer finishes decrypting. They are pointing assault rifles in his face. They drag him out of his room, flash copy his hard drive before it re-encrypts, and seize all of his equipment. Default knows he's finished, but the worst part, watching the agents carry off his hard drive. A hard drive with nearly 1,000 Bitcoin. He blacks out. <laughs> Kraka, too, gets raided by the British police forces, and his computers are confiscated. One other CWA member gets arrested in the US, and three more in the UK. Since Kraka was underage and in the United Kingdom, he got a lenient sentence. He spent two years in a juvenile detention center. He was the first minor in the UK to be imprisoned for hacking. Today, he's keeping his head down and is done with crime. He just wants to make a career in cybersecurity. And my go, dude, dude, one day, one day he'll bring it back. I believe, I believe one day he'll bring it back. Fuck the federal government, dude. Fucking dog shit piece of shit motherfuckers dude dude didn't even do a single bad thing and move on with his life he did not want to give us an interview default even though he was less involved paid a much higher price he went straight to federal prison with a five-year sentence he had to pay one hundred forty-five thousand dollars in restitution and due to COVID regulations, spent a significant amount of that time in solitary confinement. Well, that's in. Oh God, I fucking hate America so much, dude. Oh my God, oh my fucking God, dude. Solitary confinement, torture for a fucking twenty-year-old, and restitution for what? By the way, oh, I'm sorry, you scared John Brennan. That's it. Like the fuck. While pleading in court, he said, I thought what I was doing was right in terms of political justice. It was. But two years later, I realized I was completely wrong. That's rough. Oh, fuck. Snowden, too, didn't have a relaxed time fighting asylum in Russia. Shortly after his leak, intelligence officials publicly fantasized about killing him. Whether you're a principled whistleblower who truly understands the... If you hate America, why do you live here? I'll happily buy you a one-way ticket out of the country. Wait, really? Do it. Right now. Buy me a ticket to Japan, one way, first class. Do it right now. That's sick. Do it right now. Do it right now, pussy. You won't. 
No, that'd be sick. Do it. Do it, 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 do it. I'll buy you a ticket to North Korea. Fine. Okay. Uh, how do we get to North Korea? Through China. Okay. Do it. Give me a first class ticket to China right now. Because you can't actually fly directly into North Korea from the United States of America. Do it. Buy me a ticket to China. Oh, even better. Oh my God. This guy's awesome. That's so sick. Do it, do it, do it, do it. If you gift the equivalent of subscriptions in this chat for a one-way ticket to China, I will promise you that I will fly there. No, 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 no. Don't do this like asking a question. Go ahead. I promise I will fly to China. If you... Gift the equivalent right now of a one-way ticket to China. I will 1,000%. I will do it. Why are you yapping? You said you'll happily buy it for me. It doesn't seem like you're too happy about it. Don't deflect. You will fly to China and never come back. You really hate this country that much? No, no, no. You just said one-way ticket. Don't ask any other questions. You said you're happily going to buy me a one-way ticket out of the country. Don't backpedal. No backtracking. Don't fucking backtrack, bitch. Give it to me. Broke boy. $700 of subs. Sure. Virtual meal. Thank you for the 25. Get the subs. Oh, he's still asking questions. Can you explain why you hate this country? Blah, 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 blah. Give it to me. Give me the ticket and I'll explain all of your... Give me the ticket equivalent. Fuck it. I'll lower it. Business class ticket. Give me the business class ticket equivalent of gifted subs in this chat for the many Hasanabi heads who don't want to see the fucking ads. Katari Dancer, thank you for the 100 gifted subs. You guys' gifted subs don't matter. That's not how this works. Just letting you know. You can gift as much as you want, but I'm talking about Air Rights 11. Okay? Air Rights 11. Air Rights 11 made a fucking statement. I challenged him on it. I said, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Let's go. No, it's not scam. Shut up, chatters. It's a conversation between... Me and Air Rights 11. Come on, broke boy. I'll answer all your fucking questions after you do it. Put your money where your mouth is. Put it in a contract and I'll buy you the ticket. You have my verbal contract. And obviously, I'm not going to give you my fucking passport or my information so you can buy the ticket for me. I'm going to buy it. Why would you need a contract if you buy it yourself? <laughs> it's on tape. Come on. Get your money up. Written contract that you leave the country and never come back. That's not what the fucking stipulation is. You can't be adding extra shit. You said, I'll happily buy you a one-way ticket out of the country. I'll gladly leave. Okay? What I do after I leave is up to me. Damn, dog. First class tickets to China going up right now. My preference is Shanghai. And that's is seemingly cheaper, too, for you. So look at that, bro. You put me in a nonstop flight for 13 hours and 40 minutes. Come on, chatter. Chengdu have panda. Hap.
Think about it. If yeah, if I come back to America, I'd be admitting it's better than China. One way ticket implies you don't have to come back. People who complain about this country shouldn't live here. There's no implication. You said you will buy me a one-way ticket out of the country. However long I choose to be out of the country is up to me. Maybe I come back. Maybe I don't. If I come back, that means, guess what? America's better than China, I guess. Doesn't that imply that uh, all conservatives should leave the country? True. I love that. The thing is, one of the things that I like about the United States of America that I glaze consistently is the supposed theoretical First Amendment, free, freedom of speech, freedom of expression rights that we have. And yet, every time I express it, there's always some dumb motherfucker in the chat chirping. Being like, wow, dude, uh, if you don't love it, why don't you leave? It's like, bro, first of all, America's fucking awesome for me, dumbass. It's, awesome. it's not awesome for you. You should be the one chirping, not me. And yet you get mad at me for chirping on your behalf. It makes no dang sense. It's so weird. America is a fucking playground for adults as long as they are wealthy enough. Okay? 100%. The Bill Burr analogy. It's like, it's like liking a sports team. If you see that the management sucks, you'd want to change it. You wouldn't go support a different team. Yep. Is dumb as hell, bro. The significance of what you're leaking. We're a stone teen furious at the world's injustices. Messing with the U.S. government will change the course of your life forever. So make sure it's worth it. In December 2023, the Biden... This Reddit account, he's a Wall Street Bets Andy. I know. I mean, of course he is. Now I know he definitely doesn't have enough money to fucking buy a one-way ticket to China. A very controversial, especially business class or first class, virtual surveillance program. The act allows the administration to spy on anyone in the world without warrant, including its own citizens. It includes a vast database of electronic communications. Leo. It's supposed to be accessed only when there's a legitimate what? reason to believe it will assist intelligence operations. But a U.S. court ruling in 2023 found that the FBI has already misused this database 278,000 times. Unlawful searches were particularly rampant between 2016 and 2020. They've snooped in the private communications of donors to various congressional candidates. They've been watching suspected January 6 rioters, and they've also been surveilling Black Lives Matter protesters. Maybe they're even surveilling us. That was a great video, by the way. Actually, Jank did a great job with this. Poor. He didn't have enough at 9 a.m. He had enough at 10 a.m. And now he's filing for bankruptcy. 